Bob the Gadget Guy here with upgrades, hot rods, and mods for the Hubsan X4-107 improved version. I've got a brand new one here on the left and a one that's been flown quite a bit on the right. And we're going to go down the list and tell you really some great things to do to improve the uh, performance and characteristics of the Hubsan X7. First thing that I do on all of these is, let's move one over here, is to mark the battery connectors. That means the connectors that are coming out of the unit and of your batteries and of your charger right here, you know, they only go one way. So it's always, you know, you're always flipping over going, which way do I need to put this thing? And um, it's easy to know how if you just take your magic marker and mark them. So I use a black magic marker over here and just uh, go ahead and mark up one of the two sides, whichever one you want to mark up. You can use the wider tip felt marker and it'll be a little quicker job. I use black so it's really easy to see. But all of my batteries and my chargers have the black marking on one side so that I don't, don't have to guess. Immediately I look at it and I know which way the plug goes. The number two mod is all of your batteries, you take them and you cut little pieces of tape about oh, a little more than a quarter inch wide and about an inch, inch and a half long, two strips, put them on both sides and taper them and push them together over here because when you put your batteries in it makes it much easier to pull them out by the little tab. Next tip is that the LEDs on the improved version X4 tend to pop out of their holder and come up loose because the wires are a little bit long feeding them over here. So what you can do is take a little drop of 5 minute epoxy or JB Weld or other adhesive and tack it right to the base of the LED where it mates into here so that it doesn't pop out and constantly become loose. Our next tip is that the LEDs are pointing their light directly up and away from the, the craft. Normally when you're flying the craft you're looking at it from down below or from the side and that LED light, because of the way LEDs are designed, is shooting directly up so you don't get a lot of light spray out to the side. What I did was take a very small piece of aluminum foil, just a teeny little piece, and crush it up into a ball. Take a little dot on a toothpick of five minute epoxy and go ahead and touch the top of the LED with it and then take your little aluminum foil ball and just adhere it to the epoxy. The epoxy will have enough uh, sort of gluing power to hold the ball in position until it sets five minutes later. And then that ball will be illuminated by the LED and spray the light out horizontally and down as you see the craft go up so you'll have much better a view of the LEDs at night and at low light. Now many of you are using the uh, larger batteries and the problem with the flap is that the larger battery actually is too long and it hits that last little rib on the flap or the first one, whichever way you're counting and that is what pushes it down and there you can catch the flap on landing or crashing and break it off. So if you want to take an X-Acto blade and trim off that first little tab, let's take a look at a uh, piece that's come off over here, you can see it'll look a little easier. That first tab in there, if you take an X-Acto blade and cut that one off, then the second one fits it perfectly and won't push the flap down. Now the standard trick on uh, small helicopters, which you can use also on the X4, is to just use a black uh, piece of electrical tape on the bottom. This one, the flap's already broken off, and that will adhere to the battery. You can pull it back. I fold it, make a little tab so it's easy to grab. Pull it back from the battery. When you put the battery in, just push it down, and it adheres to the battery, holding it in nice and snug. It doesn't really add any uh, appreciable extra weight either. Surprise, surprise, the antenna on this remote control is a dummy. They just put it on there because remotes have antennas. The actual antenna for this is on the circuit board. So truthfully, the first time you drop this thing on the antenna, it's going to bust. Uh, you can just actually take it off, clip it at the top, pull it out. Absolutely no effect whatsoever. And the unit's even, uh, now you can put it in your pocket. Here's something of critical importance. Helicopter blades are marked, and these are marked too. If you look on the top, you've got an A and B marking right there. Here's a B. And you've got to put them back on the right motors when you're replacing the, replacing the blades, or the helicopter will not fly because the uh, angles are different on them. So be sure as you're taking them off to look for that lettering and then go ahead and match them up. I also noticed that actually on the back, they're numbered as well on the back with numbers. 
and I'm going to guess, but normally that is the weight of the, uh, the blade. A lot of times on uh, the larger helicopter blades, they're marked with a weight so you match the sets up. But uh, that most important thing is the, the uh, A and B marking on the top, so put them on the right motor shaft or you will not be able to lift the helicopter off the ground. I'd like to mention that if you're charging with a USB charger, it's going to take forever. What you really want to get is get yourself a, uh, a charger, a World War type charger. This is from another helicopter, but it's basically what they call a 1S charger. S means cell, and these are 1S cells. They're one lithium battery cell. They're about 3.7 volts. So this will have a little blinky LED on it. This is what it does, and when it's done, it turns green. But these single charge, these will charge at a much better current rate for these batteries. And if you want, you can get the um, five-way splitter. Banggood.com has those as well, and uh, and charge five of them at once. But be careful you don't have ones that are partially charged and ones that are totally discharged. Don't mix them on that same five-way splitter because it will not get an even charge. Uh, really best is to do one of them at a time on a good quality plug-in wall charger. Let's quickly review the calibration routine. I know you got a piece of paper in the instruction manual with that, but it's good to remember once in a while that you need to run calibration and when you first get the unit. Turn it on, and it doesn't seem to matter whether you turn the transmitter on first or the, or the copter first, it always binds. Go into expert mode by pressing the right control in. See the blinking LED? Push the right control or the left control all the way down to the right without getting any motor. And then I say slowly turn it back and forth several times until you see the LEDs blink in the front of the X4. And it just takes sort of a random amount of time when they do that and you'll see them blink. There they go, and you're ready to rock. I like to notch out a little plastic right where the wires come out of the body so it gets out of the way of the battery and it slips in more easily. The X4 has a breakaway joint in all four legs right here. It snaps open in case you really have a, a hard impact. It keeps the whole arm from breaking off. A lot of people have reported though that it causes some stability problems, especially when you're running a camera on the uh, unit. So some people cut a piece of tape about yay wide, well maybe a little more than a quarter, about an inch and a half long, and wrap it around this arm, around that joint point, so that there's absolutely no flex. That's an optional mod that you might think about. Here is the uh, Model 11 or 808 high definition key fob camera. It's got the lens in the front, microphone, piece of Velcro under this, and it mounts cleanly right under the body of the X4, so you can have an aerial HD video camera. Lastly, let's talk about something uh, pretty simple but important. Uh, I would suggest getting a number one size screwdriver over here. This one's by Align Helicopter Disassembly Screwdriver. You can just use a small jeweler screwdriver, but the very smallest kind, the kind for helicopters are just super high quality. The other thing is lithium batteries and their treatment. Lithium batteries do not like to be stored at full charge or zero charge. They prefer to be stored at about 40 to 50 percent charge at 40 degrees ideally. So if you were wanting to say buy an extra set of five and store them for later, ideally they'd have be about half charged. You don't want a full charge on them. Stick them in a Ziploc bag and stick them in the refrigerator and 40 degrees at half charge will make them last for a very, very long time. So don't charge them all up and sit them in a hot place. That's just standard lithium battery care. Also what you can do is you can number or letter your batteries when you get them in so you know you know which set they're from and that kind of thing so they have a sort of ID that you can follow their their, uh, their life and when they're bad, mark them and then dispose of them correctly.